the recent legislation changes allowing victim survivors of childhood sexual abuse to report is significant. The, the fact that sexual violence is unlike any other crimes is that when it happens, there's a, there's a loss of power that can, have, that can take place. And that loss of power can be taken by systems who refuse to listen. It can be by the perpetrator who is your relative or someone you know. It could be any other thing. And so there's challenges. There's a lot of different dynamics as to why people don't report. And the opportunity for there to be an expansion of time for folks to report is, is truly significant and historical. And there should have never been a, a time limit of when you can report. And so I think all credit goes to victim survivors who have been pushing for this forever. Um, the victim survivors have made this legislation happen for a couple of years. Um, and just the fact that their, their voices are being heard and there's actionable steps being taken is again, significant. And I'm hopeful that this will continue. We're nowhere near where we should be. Um, but I'm hopeful that as people start to listen to victim survivors and to hear them after years of silencing them, a lot of really important changes will take place. Um, so I'm wondering if you have thoughts on where we could be going in a bit, in a stronger direction in the future. Well, first, I'd like to retract my previous statement because I said there's gaps in the system. There's no gaps in the system. The system was never designed for victim survivors. So we need to uproot the entire system and make it more victim centered. Um, the legal uh, aspect is one thing, but the healing aspect is another thing. When it comes to mental health services, oftentimes victim survivors do have to pay out of pocket to receive services um, for a trauma that they endured by the hands of someone else. I also recognize that these laws are written for criminal justice costs. And a lot of the um, experiences that victim survivors have, they don't actually want to go through the criminal justice process. They don't actually want the person to be jailed. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they just, most of the times they just want the behavior to stop and we have no other alternatives to offer them. And so when we look at this uh, criminal justice process, if we just think about fixing this alone without offering other options, like we, we just need more options. <laughs> yeah. And then again, criminal justice process versus a victim justice process, um, you know, it's just the perspective of that it's very different. Um,